Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. We're taking a look today at the Dell XPS 13 9315. This is the lower end of the XPS 13 line, but I think it packs a lot of value. And in this video, we're going to take a look at this particular machine, but also point out a few areas where it might compare with the Plus Edition, which is a little more powerful and a little more expensive. And we're going to get into this in just a second, but I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure, this is on loan from Dell. So we're done with this. It goes back to them. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this Dell laptop is all about. Now, at the time I'm recording this review, which is February of 2023, you can often get some really good prices on new laptops. That's because many manufacturers have announced their new laptops for later in the year, but the current ones are still available. And as such, you can get a pretty good price on this one. Right now, this starts at $799 at the time I'm recording this video. And the one we're looking at today as configured costs about $1,000 right now. Now, this unit has an i5-1230U processor on board. They also have an i7 version available. This has 16 gigabytes of RAM and 512 gigabytes of solid state storage. One important note on this laptop is that everything is soldered down. You can't upgrade any of it. So just be aware of that. This is a lot like an Apple laptop in that the storage, RAM, and networking are all just soldered right onto the main board and it's not easily replaceable by the user. Uh, this one has a 13.4 inch display as all the XPS 13s have. And this particular model has the touch display that is running at 1920 by 1200. And that is a 16 by 10 aspect ratio. This display also has 500 nits of brightness. There is a 4K version available also. Now this will cover 100% of sRGB and will run at 60 Hertz. Now you might be tempted to go up to the 4K display on this to kind of go for the gusto, but to be honest with you, I think the full HD is the sweet spot for this size. And that's because at 13 inches, even with a full HD display, you do get a good amount of pixel density. So things look nice and sharp. Certainly the 4K display will look a little better, but it won't be as dramatic of a difference on this size versus something larger. So for example, if you had this resolution on a 16 inch laptop, that display would not look nearly as nice as the 4K given the size and the pixel density. But here, I think uh, this will do more than uh, adequately for uh, having a nice high quality display on this. And you also get slightly better battery life when you're running with a lower resolution display like this. It also has a 2000 to one contrast ratio. It kind of rivals what you might see on an OLED display, nice deep blacks on this. And overall, I'm very pleased with how this display looks and you've got very thin bezels on here as well. The keyboard and trackpad are pretty nice too. As you can see, the keys are well spaced. They are backlit. One thing I noticed with the backlight though, I'm not sure this is gonna come off on camera, but when you enable the backlighting on the keys, uh, sometimes when you're in a decently lit room, you often can't see the keycaps from an angle. So that was the one thing I noticed. You may wanna make sure that that keyboard backlight is off when you are uh, in the office. But beyond that, at night it looks great and I do like the size of the keys, the spacing, and the tactile feedback on it. Get a good amount of key travel given the thin uh, casing here, and overall I found it to be a pretty nice experience here as I've been uh, testing it out this week. You do get a fingerprint reader in the upper right-hand corner that doubles as the power button, and a decent trackpad here, which tracks quite well. Dell has been making really nice keyboards and trackpads on these XPS models for quite a while now, and this one is no exception, so it really feels uh, quite nice to operate. I don't think you'll have any issues getting used to everything. And it's incredibly lightweight. It is well under three pounds, 2.59 to be exact, or 1.17 kilograms. It is made out of aluminum, so it's got a nice rigid feel despite the fact that it is so light. And it's very well balanced here too, so I can lift up the display here with one hand without the keyboard coming with it. Uh, so I was very pleased with the overall build quality here, especially as this is the entry level in the line and not the top of the line. There's not much for ports on this though. You have two Thunderbolt 4 ports, one on the left and one on the right, and that is it. No card reader, no anything else, just those two. 
Uh, you will plug your power into these, but these can also output video and, of course, run with Thunderbolt or USB data devices. And one of the things that I like to do is dock my laptops with a Thunderbolt docking station where I can get a whole bunch of ports and power delivered to the unit along with display out using just a single cable. And that's one of the great things you can do with Thunderbolt. You can even have an external GPU that you can plug into this thing to improve its graphical performance. So there's a lot that you can get out of those Thunderbolt ports, but those are the only ports you're gonna get on this one. Now it has a 720p webcam, not the highest resolution, but it does look like it's doing some degree of image processing. It gives you a nice warm image there. The webcam is at the tippity top here of the unit. It supports Windows Hello for facial recognition and of course everything else you might want to do for web conferencing. Of note, the early versions of the XPS 13 used to have the webcam down on the bottom, so I do appreciate it being up top even if it's at a lower resolution. Now the speakers on this sound pretty good. They are downward firing, but they've got a good range of sound with decent stereo separation. I found them to be very crisp and clear and loud. And music actually sounded pretty good on this, but of course you might want to attach headphones for a better audio experience. And this lacks a headphone jack, so you have to get uh, something that can adapt to the USB port here or connect over Bluetooth. Now, battery life on this out of the box will get you probably north of 10 hours when you're doing basic kinds of tasks and keeping the display brightness down. But that will come at the expense of performance. And there are some settings that you can adjust here to squeeze a little bit more out of this device. So if you go into the My Dell application and head over to the Power Manager, if you go into Settings and then select the Thermal Mode here, you have some choices, and by default, it's on this optimized setting that will run most basic tasks just fine, but you might see it lagging a little bit in the graphical uh, intensive apps like video editors and games. So you can set it here to ultra performance and get more out of it. The system will run a little warmer and the fan will kick on more frequently, but you'll get that performance. But if you are just looking to prolong as much battery life as possible, setting it in the optimize mode will get you a good balance of performance and battery longevity. Now, if you're curious about the XPS 13 Plus, they happened to send one to us also for this review on loan. And I was playing around with this a bit earlier and you'll see some benchmark comparisons. And this one certainly looks a little fancier. It's got a completely redesigned keyboard deck here. So the keyboard goes edge to edge, unlike the more traditional keyboard on the uh, regular XPS 13. The one we're looking at today also just has the mechanical trackpad. This one has a virtual one uh, with haptic feedback that sits in the middle here. So this is certainly the more modernized interpretation. You even have like a little uh, bar up here that will switch context depending on uh, what you are looking to do with the function key here. And these also perform better. So they do have more powerful Intel processors on the XPS Plus line versus the 9315 that we're looking at today. So if you do want to do a little more than just the basics, the Plus is probably the way to go. It also has a slightly larger battery, but that is negated a bit by the fact that the processors they chose for this line are a little more powerful. So it's up to you to decide what you kind of need here. But I think for a lot of folks who are looking for a small, thin and light laptop, this is going to provide a bulk of the performance that I think most general users will be looking for. And if there are some things on the Plus that you really like, like its aesthetics or maybe the little edge in performance you'll have, uh, that might be worth looking at. But I think the value is certainly uh, packed more heavily into the lower end model here. So let's take a look and see how this one performs. We'll begin maybe with a little uh, web browsing here to start and then kind of go up from there. So we'll take a look at the nasa.gov homepage. This does have Wi-Fi 6 on board, so everything is very snappy and responsive here as we move around. Having the touch display here also helps to uh, be able to navigate things, and there's really no issue here uh, browsing the web or running word processing applications or any of the other basic tasks that you might uh, need to run on a laptop like this. It should do everything you need quite well. Now we also tested out YouTube on this to see how it handles online video. As expected, no issues with it. We did see a couple of drop frames on this 1080p 60 video when it first got going and the page was first rendering, 
but after that, everything played back smoothly with no additional drop frames, as you can see here. So overall, if you are looking to watch Netflix or any one of the other streaming providers out there, this is going to do it quite well. And all of the displays on this model support Dolby Vision. And on the browserbench.org speedometer benchmark test, we got a score of 277.9, which is right in line with what we've seen with other Intel processors from this generation. Now, I do think if you're doing some higher end video editing, the Plus Edition is probably where you want to start, or maybe even something more powerful than that. But I got DaVinci Resolve loaded up on here, and we've been uh, playing around with a 4K 60 video project. It does skip around a little bit, but it's usable. So I think if you're doing some basic editing, like the sorts of things that I do here on my YouTube channel, you should do well with this, but uh, it certainly is going to play back a little better on the Plus Edition that has a more powerful Intel GPU on board. If we did attach an external GPU to the Thunderbolt, we would certainly see better performance out of apps like this one. Now, as far as gaming is concerned, I think if you are looking to play current AAA titles, you might want to look at the Plus Edition of the XPS 13 versus this one. So right now, we're running with those optimized settings turned on, and we're in the 20 frames per second category here, playing Red Dead Redemption 2 at essentially a 720p resolution at the lowest settings. It is struggling a bit with this, whereas other more powerful 12th generation Intel chips do a little better. The reason is, is that the chips that they have on the Plus Edition XPS 13 have more GPU cores on them than the chip inside of the 9315s have. So if you are looking to play a game like this, know you're going to be in the 20s, uh, even at low settings, but you could probably squeeze out about 30 frames per second on the more powerful Intel chips. Older games will run great like Half-Life 2 and others, but this is certainly something that I'm not going to recommend for gamers looking to play games on the go. And on the 3D Mark Time Spy benchmark test, we got a score of 1066 when the 9315 here was set to its performance mode. By comparison, the Plus Edition does much better, 1553 when it was in the performance setting. And you can see that laptop also with an i5 chip does a lot better on all three categories of this test. Now we also ran the 3D Mark stress test and there we got a passing grade of 99.7% also in the performance mode. And that indicates that even under heavy sustained load, the computer here is going to maintain very consistent performance, which is a good thing. It's just that you're not going to get the same level of performance you'll have on the Plus Edition. Incidentally, we got a very similar score on the Plus model, which of course runs at a higher rate of performance and also has more robust cooling built in than this one does. But nonetheless, it was nice to see a very thin and light laptop here maintain its performance even under load. This does have a fan on board. It's not all that noisy. When you're running in the optimized mode, the fan won't kick on all that frequently, so it generally operates very quietly when you're doing day-to-day -day work. Now, we always like to test out Linux here on the channel when we look at a laptop, and it looks like things are working, for the most part, pretty well here. This is Ubuntu 22.04, and it was able to detect Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, audio, the display properly. The touchscreen is working here as well. Uh, so altogether, it just kind of booted up here and detected everything without issue. The only thing that's not working at the moment that I can see is the webcam. Uh, but beyond that, I was able to successfully get uh, a Linux operating system here to boot up. And I'm sure there must be some drivers out there, perhaps on Dell's website uh, for the webcam. Uh, Dell has been very good about supporting Linux in the past. And this was a pretty quick and easy boot here to get Linux up and running on it. Altogether, I found this to be a very nice laptop, especially for the prices that I'm seeing it at right now. It is exceptionally thin and light. It doesn't have many compromises insofar as what it can do. You've got two Thunderbolt ports on board. It performs adequately for the task. It has great battery life. It is very well built and quite attractive as well. That is going to do it for this one. Until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters including Gold Level supporters Brian Parker, Chris Allegretta, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Logic AGR, Tom Albrecht, 
and I'm the Brown. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.